And I'll just never forget that feeling of just like my heart dropping into my stomach. I got in my car and I said, I don't want to do this anymore. And he literally tailgated me. So I pulled over and came into my car. He took his belt off and whipped me with it. I was covered in welts and bruises and the whole thing was just horrific. Hi everyone and welcome back to my channel. Today we're going to be continuing the conversation about some of the abuse and traumas that I went through growing up. I'll make sure to link my other videos on this topic below in case you need some more backstory, but today I'm specifically going to be sharing about some, you know, abusive relationships that I ended up in during my teenage years and early 20s. Obviously, you know, this could be a really pretty heavy topic and a challenging one to discuss, but I want to share my experiences with all of you because I hope that, you know, in turn it can help anyone who may have experienced something similar to know that, you know, there is hope on the other side. Like I've shared before, I have been in therapy practically my entire life, it feels like, and as an adult, I've just put a ton of time into learning more about mental health, forgiveness, and healing. I would definitely say that, you know, that is the reason why I am able to be sitting here today talking to you guys about all of this. Before we get too far into it though, I wanna preface that this conversation, you know, by saying that if there is anyone out there watching this who is currently in an abusive situation, I urge you to please reach out to a therapist, friend, loved one, you know, just find please someone you can trust and talk to and know that you are not alone. I am living proof that where you are in life right now does not need to be where you are forever. And when I think about the person that I am today, I would describe myself as someone who is pretty self-assured. You know, I'm definitely not afraid to stick up for myself and really I just don't take anyone's bullshit. But when I was younger, that was definitely not the case. It was quite the opposite. I really don't think I found my voice until I was in my early 20s and started Dancing with the Stars. You know, there are so many different reasons I could point to for why that was the case, whether it was from some of my early childhood traumas with my parents' divorce or the sexual abuse that I experienced when I was a child, or even just, you know, the dynamic of growing up as a competitive ballroom dancer, because that in itself can be such a man's world. And I kind of just did as I was told, to be quite honest. It took me a long time to really just, you know, have the confidence to, to stand up for myself. And we all know that being a teenager and navigating those relationships in general can be tough. So for me, during those years, I really just found myself in such a negative pattern. So I started dating when I was 13. And mind you, I grew up pretty fast because just from being in the dance competition world, you kind of have to. I mean, I was already traveling on my own at that age across the world with my dance partner because, you know, my mom couldn't just put her life on hold and come for months at a time to, you know, England where we would train every single summer because she was working and honestly, she was supporting my partner and I so that we'd be able to go to England. So I thought of myself as just being really grown up and having to take care of myself and in a lot of ways I, I was. I mean, looking back as an adult, I was really young, you guys. I uh, lost my virginity to my first boyfriend when I was just 13 and while there was nothing that I would say was abusive at all about that relationship, I definitely think that experience set me up to really just stick with a pattern of moving just way too fast with the people I was dating and honestly, I got myself into some really really bad and, and tough situations. My next relationship started as soon as I began my first year of high school when I started dating a senior. And at that time and even now, a lot of people had no idea that I grew up in a pretty privileged environment because I never wanted people to just like me or hate me for that matter because of the environment I was raised in. So, you know, in one hand, I'd say I grew up way too fast, but on the other hand, you know, I also lived a pretty sheltered lifestyle because of the household I was raised in, but also because of the environment I was around in the competitive ballroom dance world. I definitely never had, you know, the talk with my parents about the realities of relationships, sex, how important it is to set boundaries with people and all of that. So um, 
it was definitely not, you know, something that anyone from my immediate family at least ever talked to me about. Plus, the ballroom dance world can be perceived as this really prim and proper world. So, you know, I think during my teenage years, I was really just rebelling against all of it, to be quite honest. Plus, the trauma I had dealt with as a young girl, as well as just not having open conversations about, you know, sex, boys, etc. And I totally had a thing for, you know, bad boys. So anyway, I started dating my boyfriend who uh, was a senior from my high school and I thought he was really cool and talented since he ran track and he was one of the best players on our high school football team at that time. But he definitely checked, I must admit, all the boxes in that bad boy category and he already had a baby actually on the way with someone else. So basically, you know, long story short, the guy came with baggage and had baby mama drama. I remember sneaking around with him. I hope my mom and dad never see this, but I'm sorry if you do. And him having sex with me after telling him I didn't want to and it ended pretty forcefully. As, you know, as if it happened yesterday, I just remember thinking at the time that I just needed to give in and, and just do it in order to keep him happy and, and keep me from getting hurt or feeling abandoned if God forbid he would break up with me for just not putting out. I mean, I think after the sexual abuse that I had experienced with our uh, driver, babysitter, uh, whatever you want to call him, I started to think that these were the types of people I deserved to be with. I didn't associate sex with intimacy or love, honestly. It was something that I did because I felt like I had to, in a way, just to keep a boyfriend and to feel safe and loved. And, you know, this was clearly horrible and I had no self-respect or self-love for myself looking back but obviously you know I now see how wrong this whole thing was and really I was just so confused about what love really meant so even after that the relationship lasted like a year and a half or so and he was definitely cheating on me the whole time with his baby mama like he um, for example would go to visit with his newborn baby and come back with full-blown no joke hickeys on his neck and tried to convince me that his baby mama had thrown a rock at him crazy i just remember wanting to believe him you know so bad to the point where i basically tried to convince myself that it was right but my intuition and my gut you know that feeling you have when you know someone is cheating or lying to you i just knew something wasn't right However, you know, I was more terrified at the thought of just being alone and was running away from what I thought would be that feeling of abandonment. The last thing I wanted, to be honest, was to be alone. So regardless of what the universe was trying to tell me or what I witnessed right in front of my face at that time, I ended up staying in the relationship. I don't know if you guys relate, but you know, that constant feeling of anxiety, loss of appetite, that emotional roller coaster became a feeling I was just way too familiar with. And it was all just really, really crazy. And looking back, I would totally consider that relationship to have been uh, one big giant mental f to be quite honest. And the start of the pattern that would, you know, that went from one abusive relationship to two, three, and four back to back relationships that continued the abuse and, and the abusive patterns which kept getting worse just when I thought it couldn't, you know. And clearly I was attracted to those types of relationships and I got addicted to the pattern of being in abusive relationships because even though we, you know, eventually broke up, my next relationship, um, believe it or not, was just way worse. So my next boyfriend was also during high school and it was one of those relationships where it was a constant like back and forth, I swear we broke up like once a week, but no matter what, I kept going back to him for years. When we started dating, he had just gotten out of another relationship with a girl who was constantly in the way, just in the way. She would literally basically say like, I still wanna mess around with you even if you're dating somebody else, you know, those types of girls. Like she was honestly obsessed with this guy. One time I was waiting for him after school and was looking for him thinking, you should be done like you should have already left and then i saw her and him speed away in her red sports car and i'll just never forget that feeling of just like my heart dropping into my stomach so you know that is when i went back to his house basically and i waited for him and when he got there i was basically like you know what the f i saw you and 
I got in my car and I said, I don't want to do this anymore. And he literally tailgated me, was on my ass and bumped the back of my Mitsubishi convertible silver eclipse at the time. So I pulled over and came into my car. He took his belt off and whipped me with it. And this happened um, close to his house and even in front of his parents who were watching the whole thing and did nothing about it. I was covered in welts and bruises and the whole thing was just horrific. And it just makes me sick to my stomach just talking about it. It honestly just makes me it's so sad to think about how badly I must have thought about myself to put up with something like that. You know, we dated all the way through senior year and towards the last half of senior year, I was pretty over it. Um, but he would honestly just like stalk me. I went to New York to try out with a new dance partner at the time and I'd walk out of my hotel and guess who'd be there? I'd walk into Times Square because our dance studio would literally be in the middle of Times Square and, and guess who I would see and run into again. You know, we weren't even talking at that point and like we were completely broken up and he would just, you know, find out where I was going to be and just show up. Honestly, the back and forth with him went on um, for years and looking back at it, it was just so crazy. I, I realize now that every time I didn't, you know, have dance in my life because there were some breaks where I didn't have a dance partner, I would just fall back into these abusive patterns and abusive relationships. And then whenever I was with these guys, I didn't want to dance because I would want to be with them all of the time to make sure they weren't cheating on me or whatever. I was very um, jealous and no wonder, but basically it was like I was living a double life practically between my dance life and then my high school life. So this whole thing was just such a bad, toxic cycle and I would really get you know affected by everything on such a deep level because I wasn't able to really express it. Eventually, at the time, my dance partner, Vesa, who, by the way, um, you'll hear more about in the videos to come about my competitive dance career, so make sure you subscribe to see those two. Um, you know, he really did help me when it comes to that relationship. And Vesa and his boyfriend, Luca, were basically like, what are you doing, Cheryl? You know, I was getting really, um, really skinny because I just lost my appetite completely from all the stress. And um, I found that However, whenever I had supportive dance partners, um, which, you know, developed into solid friendships throughout the time we had spent together and some have developed into stronger relationships now, I was able to find, you know, the strength within them to leave these bad relationships. And, you know, at the time they would remind me how I, you know, I didn't deserve to be treated like this. And I wish that I could say that, you know, this pattern after high school just disappeared but unfortunately that wasn't the case and even after i graduated you know high school and into my professional dancing career i was still into those types of bad boy um relationships and i continued on the pattern of dating abusive men um, i also was abusing myself by drinking too much and just really had no respect for myself which i'll be talking more about as well in future videos Looking back, I honestly think that the first relationship I ever had that did not fit this abusive pattern was when my now husband Matt and I dated the first time around back in 2007. That was after I was already living in LA and I think after the third season of Dancing with the Stars. I honestly think at the time when we first dated, I didn't clearly love myself enough to think that I deserved to be with someone who was actually nice to me. and. I was just wrapped up in this new like get out of jail free card LA party lifestyle whereas you know he had already kind of been there and done that since he grew up in this industry so I'm just so grateful and happy that the universe really brought him back into my life when I was ready and had grown into you know the person I am now because he is the complete opposite of everything bad about my past relationships. I think when I look back at this time in my life, I could sit here and say that I wish these things had never happened to me, but I look at it now as every part of my story has helped me to become the woman I am today. You know, sure, it would have been better to not have had to go through some of these things, but I'm not sure that I would be the same person if I hadn't. You know, today I am someone who is really confident using her voice and totally comfortable 
probably too comfortable with sticking up for myself. I see how much the younger version of me was just, you know, seeking out love. But really, I had to learn to love myself first. I will always be on this journey of growth and healing. And it's not like just one day I woke up and I was cured of all the bad patterns in my life. It's been a lot of work and self-reflection and it's really been challenging at times just to get here. But I am for sure living proof that you can come out of these situations and not just survive, but thrive. I really hope that any of you who have experienced anything similar or even just are struggling to have self-love know that you are not alone, but that it can and will get better if you choose to make the changes to get there. I just wanna thank you all so much for being on this journey with me. And for those of you who are subscribed to my channel and liking my videos, I just wanna say from the bottom of my heart how much it means to have your support when sharing you know, these more difficult and vulnerable stories. For those of you who are new here, I hope you can check out some of my other videos on this topic, but also know that there are a lot of fun videos here too. I really just want to show you guys, you know, every side of me and, you know, not just the perfectly made up, overly tanned, except right now, but covered in rhinestones person you are used to seeing on your TV screens. Um, so please let me know what you thought of this video in the comments below. And um, it would mean so much, you know, if you can give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel as well. I seriously, seriously appreciate every single one of you. Until next time, sending you all so much love and light. Bye for now.